Uh, it's my great pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to all of our Inner Circle members, our special guests today, and our friends who join us on an ongoing basis. We're really delighted to welcome you to the YWCA Program Centre. So now I want to tell you a little bit about the program that we're here to learn about today, and that is YWCA Single Mom Support Services. I think as many of us know, um, and very sadly, circumstances force many low-income mothers you know, to make d very difficult choices between things like food, shelter, education, and childcare. Things that are absolutely fundamental to, to building and living a decent, normal life. These women often are forced to stay in situations that do not meet their basic needs. They find themselves couch serving or perhaps staying in abusive relationships when they would really prefer to leave because they lack the support um, and the services that they require to actually chart a path to an independent life. As most of you know, helping women to move beyond these challenges is absolutely fundamental to the vision of the YWCA. And we do that by respecting the personal choices of these women, helping them to chart a future life plan, and then surrounding them with the holistic services that help them to successfully execute that plan and build new lives of independence and success. Our single mother support groups are absolutely fundamental to the, that work. We've been operating single mother support groups for more than 33 years. And these are, this is a very interesting model. These groups uh, meet on a weekly basis and they connect women with a whole array of opportunities. Affordable housing, parenting resources, legal and financial support, education and employment programs, the entire packages of services that, that women need in order to execute that, that future life plan. And I would also be remiss if I did not acknowledge the fabulous work of Janice Lee. And Janice, do you want to stand up here? I'd like everyone to give Janice a really resounding round of applause. And thanks to a three-year funding collaboration by Coast Capital Savings, Envision Financial, and Van City, the YWCA has been able to bring single mother support groups to Surrey, to Port Coquitlam, to Aldergrove, Maple Ridge, and Abbotsford, adding to the array of services that we already offer in the other uh, parts of Metro Vancouver, uh, and really dramatically increasing the outreach that we're able to provide in these new and emerging communities. And I understand that how this came about is the three women who are the CEOs of these three credit unions, um, Tamara Vrooman, Tracy Reddys, and Lonnie Skinners, all, all of whom, um, I must say, are very good friends of the YWCA, had got together for lunch. And they decided that they wanted to be able to demonstrate that it is possible for people who are competitors in the business world to collaborate around a vision of creating a better community. And so they agreed to get together to support a program for the YWCA. And this expansion of our single mother's support programs is the result of that. So this is an initiative that will empower many single mothers to gain knowledge, to build confidence and make connections through groups and through one-on-one -on -one meetings helping them to chart that, that path to economic and personal independence that the YWCA stands for. We really are inspired by the generosity of the three uh, credit unions and of, their three, of the three absolutely fabulous leaders. Um, they show us that true meaning of cooperation and collaboration, and it's with your support that we'll be able to really improve conditions for many low-income single mothers and help them build those brighter futures. So I'd like to ask you to come, to come up and join me. Um, I guess uh, we have, I guess, a little presentation, and I understand that you're going to say a few words, or one of you is going to say a few words. All right, thank you. Well, good afternoon. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here today, and we really would like to thank the YWCA for their leadership in supporting single mothers, for supporting families and children throughout Metro Vancouver, and certainly with this new initiative moving into the Fraser Valley. Uh, it's a thrill for all three of us uh, to be here today, and, and as uh, Janet was saying, this really was a collaborative effort. How do we look at uh, our credit unions being that competitive model in the community, but together we can really make a valuable difference. Uh, the impact that our resources have as a collective versus single uh, is really going to be shown in the work that is carried out here by the YWCA and certainly throughout uh, the lives of the children and, uh, and the mothers as they go through this program and just uh, the, the work that they'll be able to bring to their families and, and to our community. So 
for us to be here. Uh, it's a partnership uh, of three who have come together to really maximize and to make a, a tremendous difference in our community. So we, we thank you for, uh, for supporting this initiative. Uh, on behalf of our partnership, we are pleased to be here. And uh, I must say, we are so pleased to be able to present a check to the YWCA Single Mother Support Program for $450,000. Uh, next, I'd like to invite uh, my colleague and co-host, Karen Hoffman, to take the podium and uh, execute the next part of our, uh, our program for today. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Janet. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> so I have the pleasure of introducing the next part of the agenda. And our first speaker is Kim, who has been a participant of the YWCA Single Mothers Support Group in Abbotsford since April of this year. And she's the mother of three kids, two, four, and six. So Kim, please come on up. Um, before coming to the YWCA, I was having a um, I was that my life and the life of my children was changed forever. My husband left me and my three small children for a 22 year old and he is currently living in Barbados with her. <laughs> so I was in great distress. Um, my three children obviously were, but especially my six year old son he um, would ask daddy to come home and then go underneath a chair and cry for him. So it was just more than I could bear. Um, so I did research online about some of the resources that were available to single moms in the area. And the why came up in a Google search. And there are many other mothers in my group who are dealing with the same feelings of being deserted and rejected. And so um, we are really a great support for each other. In my outside world, no one could really understand the pain that I was going through. Um, in the group, when a new member bursts into tears, we understand where she's coming from and we hug her and we take really good care of her because we understand. So. There are other mums in the program who have a different story to tell. Some of them come from um, domestic abuse, some of them come from substance abuse, and uh, some of them come from different cultural backgrounds. So it's this diversity that makes the group very special, and we actually have a lot of fun together. So uh, a few weeks ago, we used the community kitchen, and we made uh, chickpea brownies and we also made curried lentil soup and it is so amazing to watch each mom grow uh, they definitely gain a sense of empowerment in the group after arriving at first basically as injured birds I have come a long way in, since I first arrived um, in April uh, I have more of a sense of humor and I'm seriously looking at and planning the future instead of feeling hopeless. Some days I feel like dancing again and I can feel the old me starting to come back. What was really hard for me being a single mother before coming to the group was how marginalized I actually was. My whole group of friends consisted of happily married women whose husband bought them iPads, flowers, fancy vacations. Um, and I felt really bad because I couldn't make my marriage work. Also, talking to some friends about my life, um, this group of friends wasn't very helpful. So I stopped getting invited to things. I guess I was the downer that didn't fit in. So the biggest um, thing that the single moms group has helped me with personally is 
a feeling of belonging and solidarity. I know that when I walk in those doors, um, I fit in. No one is judging me. And people actually want to hear what I have to say. Uh, I leave refreshed and I'm ready to take on another week. In my group, I don't have to hear about the, the flowers or the jewelry um, that their husband bought them. I, I just hear about the women like me. I hear about the same struggles that they're having and we share what works to get through the day. So we talk about our futures. And if one of us in the group is going on a fancy vacation, we're really happy for each other because we know just what a big deal that is and how impossible it can actually be to do that. <clears throat> Some of the women in the group are more seasoned at being single moms and I can see in them a strength, but at the same time, I can observe that the pain of loss is something that never actually goes away. So I know there isn't going to be a magical day when I'm going to be um, completely healed from what happened. There's always going to be a sadness. However, um, the group has taught me that moving forward is the only option. So, how to honor myself as a person and have the dreams and goals are the vitality of life. And no person can give you those things. They take work and they are a great distraction. Um, another thing that I especially like about my group is the little cards that we pass around at the end. Um, some cards have just one word, for example, truthfulness or contentment. And I like to use that word as my mantra for the week. And it's fun to randomly pick a card and let that word kind of get you along. For instance, um, one week I picked a card that said, don't dwell on the past, but live in the powerful present because everything is as it should be. And so these cards just kind of make you reevaluate um, things which is, is very helpful. So sometimes we see things as we are instead of how things actually are. And the group reminds me every week to be kind to myself and ignore the negative self-talk. So I'm moving forward in life and I'm seeking employment where I can use my skills in public speaking and customer service. I have a diploma in media studies from Capilano University and I've also studied some broadcast journalism at BCIT. As well, I have experience working on cruise ships as a lecturer. And too bad I can't bring the kids on board because I already asked, they said no. Thank you. Kim, you said that you came a long way since April, and I think you've come a long way today to be here with us from Abbotsford, so really thank you for that. Our second speaker is Carla, who, with her son, left an abusive relationship and found support and encouragement in the YWCA Baby and Me group. Carla is also a YWCA bursary recipient and is currently studying nursing in Langara. Carla, please come on up. Moral support because <laughs> I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Thank you everyone for being here today and for listening to me uh, tell my story and share with you my goals and ambitions. Um, I dropped out of high school in grade 12 to work uh, and neither of my parents had a high school education. So in our home, it, there was not really very much value placed on education. Um, and although my four siblings and I can laugh about it now, uh, poverty, uh, growing up in poverty deeply affected our lives. Um, I carried the shame of not having finished high school for many, many years. Um, I realized without a high school diploma, I was virtually unemployable anywhere but the service industry. And I bartended and served to support myself, and uh, I made a vow to myself that I would never be poor again. Um, and serving provided a livable wage. And at some point, I gave up on the idea of going back to school. I was just too embarrassed to ask for help or to let people know that I hadn't actually graduated high school. Um, Eventually, I ended up in Yellowknife, working another serving job, and it was there that I met my ex, who is the son or the father of my son. Um, what started out great 
went badly before I could even notice the warning signs. Um, it disintegrated the way many abusive relationships do. First, it was name calling and put downs. Uh, he dictated where I could go and who I could spend time with. And uh, even then sort of came the emotional abuse. There was a lot of put downs. And uh, then I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> Surprise. Um, immediately, things got worse than I could have imagined. Um, the abuse was magnified, and I never knew what I was going to say or do to set him into a rage. <sighs> he turned violent several times during the pregnancy. <laughs> we kept Kleenex here for a <laughs> minute. Um, he choked me and threw me around, and even broke one of my teeth when he threw me into a bed frame. After a particularly violent um, incident, I came home to BC, and he promised he would reconcile and he would see, or promised he would seek help for his alcohol and violence issues. And I naively rec reconciled with him because I so badly wanted the security of a two-parent family and financial stability. <clears throat> Although he didn't immediately become violent again, the emotional, verbal, and financial abuse continued almost immediately. On my due date, he got drunk and kicked me out of the house, and I spent the next week heavily overdue trying to find an apartment for the baby and I, fielding all sorts of offensive questions and comments from the Craigslist landlords who didn't want to rent to a single mother. They would ask, where's your husband, and are you on welfare, and how are you going to afford this, and even, we just can't have babies here. Um, on top of this, my doctor induced me, and I felt there was no other choice but to go back to my abuser. On September 8, 2012, I welcomed my son Caden into the world, and he is everything to me. He is, I love him with an intensity that I never imagined possible. He's just amazing. When Caden was four weeks old, we went to visit my ex's family in the Okanagan. My ex flew into one of his rages while we were driving to Kelowna, threatening to drive off the cliff into Okanagan Lake and kill us. When he pulled over and tried to drag me out of the vehicle, I knew that I needed an out, that Caden and I were not going to be safe as long as he was involved. The next night, when I refused to let him hold the baby, as he was obviously too intoxicated, he first tried to pull Caden from my arms, and failing that, began to hit me. I defended myself as best I could with an infant in my arms and barricaded myself in a spare bedroom and called the RCMP. That was the last time I saw my son's father. <laughs> I finally realized the violence wasn't going to stop unless I put an end to it. I suddenly became a single mom with a four-week-old, no education, and about $10 in the bank. I was irrationally angry with myself. I didn't want to be a broke single mom, and I didn't want my son to grow up as poor as I did. <clears throat> the first thing that struck me was that it was a room of very capable, bright, loving women. Though everyone was unique and had different backgrounds, there was a common unifier in that these women loved their children unconditionally and truly wanted to make life better for their beautiful babies. How was I going to break this cycle of poverty? The answer, the one that had eluded me for years, was suddenly obvious. It was time to go back to school. I applied to Langara as a mature student and was accepted immediately. It was like being a weight being lifted. I no longer had to be ashamed of being uneducated. I'm currently doing my prerequisites so that I can follow my dream of nursing. Not only is it stable and in demand, it's a career I can be proud of and I can spend my working career making a difference in people's lives. Now that I was accepted, I had to figure out how to pay for school. <laughs> Again, the YWCA stepped up and made a major change in my life. I was awarded the very generous Kamal Basra Sophia Financial Group Bursary, and the YWCA's donor relations manager, Vanessa Wellington Clark, went out of her way to forward my application to another bursary fund, the Street Meal Scholarship Fund, who also awarded me a generous bursary. Without these, I would not have been able to cover the cost of tuition before the payment deadline. Then last month, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that another YWCA donor had decided to top up my bursary to help lower my educational expenses. I am so grateful and humbled by the massive outpouring of support by the YWCA staff and donors. I cannot stress enough how important this has been to making, uh, to making so many positive changes in my life. Just over a year ago, I couldn't escape from a cycle of abuse, and I never imagined I deserved anything better than that abuse. I'm now on my way to a degree. I'm on my way to a better life. I'm achieving things I never thought were possible, and every day I grow more confident in my abilities. I'm so fortunate to have been a part of YWCA's programs, and I'm so thankful for the encouragement of everyone else who believes in me.
thank you very much, Carla, for sharing those experiences with us. And thank you both, Kim and Carla, for the stories of how YWCA Singles Mother Services has helped, ha have helped you. It's because of Coast Capital, Envision, Van City's generous donors, donations, and the generous donors in this room today that YWCA Services have been able to help many women and their families, including Kim.